All right, welcome to that Cinch Show. We got a special episode today because we got a whistleblower from inside Moog here to break it all down for you. So without further ado, let's get to that Cinch Show. All right, so welcome back. So like I said, today we got a little bit of a special episode. We got a Moog whistleblower here. Now we had to mask his voice. We're going to call him Mr. X and uh, he's going to break down. He was inside the belly of the beast. He's going to let you go know what's going on about the, the Moog, the Behringer by Moog, Mike Adams, the whole works. So, I mean, just to, just to let you know where we're coming from. See, the CEO said he reached out to Behringer and tried to get them to buy to buy Moog. And Uli was like, I don't think so. So we covered this a little bit last week. And as you know, Moog's had their issues. They had Chinese tariffs and supply issues. Then, you know, they had uh, the cancellation of Moog Fest, you know? So they had a bunch of controversies going on that if you were following along like I was, you know, it was pretty crazy. So let's jump right over here and see what our, our whistleblowers got to say. Cause you know, like I said, we had to mask his voice and his identity, but He's gonna tell us a little story, okay? What this was all about. So, this is uh, this is Mr. X, you know? And he's here with us today. Thank you, Synth Samurai. It's an honor to be here. It's great to have you here too, Mr. X. Now, uh, you do got some insight into the whole the whole situation with Mike Adams. I mean, you work there. Just tell us a little bit what, uh, what went on, you know, while you were working there. As a former employee, I do not find this revelation of Mike Adams trying to sell out the entire company to Behringer before selling to InMusic surprising at all. Some common, very big, misconceptions. Moog products, aside from the old full-size Mooger Fugers, the Voyagers, the Model DRIs, and the Modular RIs were all pre-populated micro-component PCBs shipped from China. All right, that's, we kind of had an idea they were, they were all from China, so. Along with the products listed above, everything else was only ever assembled in the Asheville factory. I mean, what was it like when you first started working there, Mr. X? Give us a little bit of insight into that. When I first started working there, products were actually given a 24-hour burn in period. As most of you will know in electronics, if an outright failure will occur, it will most often occur within this 24-hour period. They were properly tested flagged for flaws or blemishes to be fixed or remedied. Now, when we spoke before, you mentioned that uh, before you left, it was starting to get a little shady on the uh, the testing aspect of everything. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Mr. X? By the time I left, products routinely were being skipped over the 24-hour burn in process. Blemishes that would have gotten a product rehoused in a new chassis were sent out the door, not as B stock, as a stock just like all the other products that didn't have any blemishes or issues. Wow, that's a pretty big deal, Mr. X. So what you're telling us is that Behringer was shipping out things as, uh, let's call them A stock, when they were actually B stock. That's quite interesting, you know? And what about the bonuses? I believe there was bonus plans for the employees working at Moog? Bonuses were based on a year-to-year -year product sales goal, regardless of production issues, shipments getting lost in Jamaica, or market estimations. If one single line out of the entire production facility did not hit their goal for the year, no one got bonuses. As I said, regardless of the fact that an entire shipment of sub-37 boards got lost in Jamaica for months. Bob's history is quite the tale. I won't go into all of it right now. I mean, you don't have to go into, don't go into to Bob Moak's history quite the tale, because, you know, we don't need, let's just hear what you got to say about the company. And this is not in any way to degrade Bob's accomplishments yes, we and understand engineering that. feats, but he was no business savant. Not many people know that when he first sold the company to Norland Musical Instruments, he sold the right to use the Moog name. When he came back, it was as Big Briar, and eventually he got the rights back to use his own name. What a country we live in that allows contracts for that LOL. So let us know about, you know, how did he, how did Bob get into his little partnership with Mike Adams? After a few years of returning as Moog Music, he got into business with Mike Adams. While Bob was designing and leading the engineering team, Mike was the bean counter in charge of the business side of things. After Bob's death, Bob's interest shares went to his family, which were then sold to Mike Adams. Regardless of selling those shares to Mike, controlling management interests cannot be transferred in death, only the financial ownership side. 
Interesting, very interesting. So you, you, you were mentioning this whole employee-owned scenario. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that and how the employee-owned scenario worked at, at Moog. As you call it Moog, but you know, we call it Moog. A few of you may have heard about the employee-owned bit that was obviously just paid publicity. I was there when it was rolled out. Employees never owned anything, any shares, nothing. Employees were not vested until the terms were met in the ESOP. So you're telling me that it was all a publicity stunt, the whole employee-owned thing? I mean, I think a lot of Moog uh, people would be very concerned about this revelation. The ESOP was just a tax-free retirement for Mike Adams, masquerading and plastered everywhere as generosity. What an amazing company. That was all BS. The shares were never publicly traded, never available to anyone to cash out again, until the terms of the ESOP were met and everyone was vested. I would welcome any employee that was working with Moog during this period that was receiving those lovely letters each year telling you how much fake stock you had and how much money it wasn't actually worth to actually give a value that they were paid out from their ESOP ownership shares. I know, we, if anybody is working for Moog who got this information, contact us in Samurai. Will you get, we'll get you on, we'll mask your name, cover everything up, same as we're doing for Mr. X here. If anyone received more than zero dollars, I'll actually be surprised. Don't get the ESLP shares and pay out conflated with a severance package. That's not what the ESLP was. Those are two different things. All right, Mr. X, so we're getting an idea here that Moog had a lot of fancy marketing and a lot of different scenarios they were kind of pushing out to the public, you know? So what's your main point here, you know? What, what, are, you, what are you trying to get at there, Mr. X? My main point of making this post is just to say that the Moog music that you all did believe in, in terms of people being employed here in the U.S. to put these instruments together and send them to you, was real. A lot of great people worked at Moog. A lot of great people got screwed over by this, all while being sold snake oil that it had never happened. Unfortunately, a lot of the publicity side, the advertising side, was complete bullshit. Oh, we're trying to keep it clean here, Mr. X. You know, we might have some might have some young people watching the show, but, we'll, you know, we'll let that one slide with the with a little bit of profanity. But, you know, you said the writing was on the wall when we were talking earlier. What, what do you mean by that? The writing was on the wall. The writing was on the wall, though. Anyone who was working at the company when this announcement was made should have had one hell of a wake up call. Mike never seemed to have had any pride or respect for Bob or the company, the people, the products. It was all just a business transaction and another way to make money. So, you were mentioned earlier to me when we were talking about the Moog Fest and what happened at Moog Fest, because there were some weird issues going on with a lot of the marketing side at Moog. I heard they had some marketing problems stuff, but what was the, what, what did you know about Moog Fest while you were working there? I won't even go into the Moog Fest debacle entail, but most people have no idea that Mike Moog just up and canceled a multi-year contract and is being sued for millions of dollars as a result. Nothing was really what it seemed with the company. I know it's kind of a dead horse at this point, but unfortunately, a lot of people were duped by Adams and the advertising publicity the company used. Thank you. So I guess, Mr. X, we kind of, we got a pretty good idea. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate you doing this. You know, we got everything hidden. We got it mass and all that, you know, so. For everybody who's here and stuck around, you know, we were trying to we're trying to get to the bottom of this. So Behringer reached out. Mr. X is telling us that we had a lot of shady stuff going on inside of Moog under Mike Adams. Now I don't know much about Mike Adams. I haven't looked into him, so I just kinda I'm going off what Mr. X is saying. If there's any other Moog employees out there who wanna come in and you know get get an interview on the books and we can we can we can hide everything up for you, but that's it. So Thank you, Mr. X, you know, for everyone who stuck around. That was just kind of a, a dramatization, you know. I was uh, surfing the internet and I came across this this Reddit post by uh, by Imaginary Winner 69 So I'll throw it down in the links. You can go read it. He's got some links in here to, to what he was talking about. And he says he was a former Moog employee. And, uh, you know, for you to summarize who stuck it out till the end of the video, we just did a little AI interpretation to put this together for you and make it kind of fun to hear, you know, rather than me just reading off the Reddit. So if you like this video, if you like the whistleblower testimony from Mo, because trust but verify he says he worked there, like, subscribe, and share. And I appreciate all you guys coming out. Thank you. That's in show.